Hi, YouTubers. Okay, I've got a uh, Father's Day gift from my family, which is uh, new fog lights uh, from, uh, I think it's Shark Racing. It's the, uh, the name of the, uh, the company. And this is going in a 2003 Hyundai Sonata. Uh, I found some information on the uh, Hyundai forums uh, around how to do the install, but I didn't see any YouTube videos. There's one aftermarket install, uh, but I thought I'd uh, do uh, some video edits as I do this process uh, here. Um, basically, I'm replacing uh, the blank fog light covers with the new one. Uh, I've got a wiring harness over there on the floor that comes with the kit. Uh, and then there's uh, uh, a, uh, the switch lever, which will replace in uh, the actual steering column itself. Um, so I just started the process. Uh, I've got a little Harbor Freight uh, lift. There's a lift point uh, right underneath the center there. Just give me a couple more inches of headroom there. It's not really, you know, holding a lot. Uh, I did put uh, wheel chocks behind the back wheels just in case. Uh, and basically what you need to do to first get access to this, a lot of the forums are talking about removing the whole bumper. I'm gonna try to do it without removing the bumper. I just don't like that idea. But uh, if you Look underneath the car here, there's what, one, and down here is a second uh, little uh, plastic, show, actually show them to you here, a little plastic uh, screw in grommet thing. You unscrew those, those two, uh, and then this whole little side panel right below the fog lights, there's the empty hole, the fog light just comes down. Uh, and that gives you enough room. Uh, I was able to reach up underneath here, see my hand, uh, and just use a little stubby, uh, stubby Phillips screwdriver. You reach up underneath, underneath there and there's four uh, screw points on the back of this and you just feel them and take the screws out. And you can see the screws over there. Uh, and then this plastic, uh, piece falls right out. So I'm going to do it on the other side here and then I'll get ready to install the lights. So first step is to get those lights in there uh, and then I'll work on the wiring harness and work my way forward uh, to the steering column uh, on how I'm going to do that. So uh, stay tuned for more here. And okay guys, so here's the second cover off. Takes you about five minutes. Just reach up there and get it done. Let's see if we can get these new ones in. Okay guys, so as you can see, I gave up on going underneath. There's just not enough room to screw it in. So everybody's right, you need to remove the bumper. So let me give you a couple uh, hints on removing the bumper. Um, Underneath, there are those plastic screw-in grommets. Some cars have them, some don't. Uh, so check, undo those, just like we did on the on these fenders here when I was first starting. There's a screw, if you go to the, the wheel, and it's easier if you turn your wheels out, but there's a screw right up here that you need to take out. That's what really holds it on. Then I started to take out the uh, the headlights. So basically there's a screw here. Um, up top here on your bumper, you'll have like, I don't know, six or eight uh, more of those screw and grommets. So you take those out. Uh, then you can pull it back a little bit and there's a hidden nut back here. Again, that goes to the, to the headlight. That just loosens it up to help the bumper come off. So once you have everything uh, loose on both sides, uh, you'll usually find that there's a little sticking right around this headlight. Uh, and you really just kind of got to give it a, a, a good pop. Uh, and then poof, 
the whole bumper comes off. <laughs> so uh, that's my experience so far. Uh, I will go next uh, to put these <clears throat> new fog lights into that frame and then I'll probably go ahead and attach uh, the wiring harness down here and run it across uh, uh, between them do some zip ties in there or something uh, and then I will reinstall the bumper something I never thought I would do but this really is just a, a rubbery plastic uh, there's nothing that's structural um, about <coughs> this particular bumper um, so don't be afraid to, to give it you know a little bit of a yank and you'll see these uh, this is where it was catching and there's these uh, like a clip on this side <coughs> and that's that's really where why you've got to give it a good yank so that this clip and it's it's a pretty sturdy clip um, I was afraid that they were little clips like what you have on your interior doors and they might break but uh, nope popped right off so that's where we're at okay guys it's really just too simple uh, uh, you flip the headlight over there's four screws one two three back here and four they even give a little uh, alignment tab um, back here uh, so that you know everything's aligned right uh, now is a good time if you're gonna do LED lights um, put those in uh, or whatever you guys do with the HID lights if you want to put ballast and all that stuff uh, down here attach the bumper uh, but yeah took me five minutes uh, to put that in uh, so now I'll look at the wiring harness and see about hooking it up between the two and ending up with the, the harness, most of it over here. Then hopefully I'll put the bumper back on uh, and then I can reach down from inside the car and grab that harness and run it around uh, to my fuse box and everything. So that's where we are. Uh, just 10 minutes once, uh, worth of work once you get the you know 30 minutes of taking the bumper off. Okay guys, so I've just kind of laid out my harness uh, here. Uh, basically this lead here, and again this doesn't come with any instructions or anything, uh, but this is the lead that goes through the firewall uh, and will connect up uh, to the switch and it's sitting over there. Uh, I took the light lead and just kind of looped it through uh, here. The relay really can just set down here. Uh, it comes in here nicely right underneath the edge of the headlight, kind of gives it some room. Uh, this is going to go to a battery ground. This is going to go to our battery power if we get it up. And I ran the wire, it's kind of hard to see black on black. I ran the wire just right above the grill and there's a, a little styrofoam place. Again, looped underneath uh, the screw bolt there and came up and did that. Uh, I don't see any real places to tie wrap it. And this is all in a nice, uh, kind of like a plastic Romex that the wires are in. So I'm just heating up my uh, cheap little uh, glue gun and gonna lay a couple beads on there, uh, enough to hold it. I took some uh, rubbing alcohol down here and wiped down the area just to make sure it's all nice and clean and will bond. So um, I think that's the way I'm gonna route it and uh, uh, hopefully next uh, we'll have this bumper back up there. Okay guys, here we are, bumper back on. Uh, no problems whatsoever. Goes on exactly the reverse. Uh, what I did was I kind of maneuvered the bumper on here and then just held it with my knees. 
and then just got that bolt started to hold it and then reached over here and got this bolt uh, started to hold it. Then I arranged the bumper. Uh, you do have to, you know, pound these in. Matter of fact, you can see there's still a little, uh, little misalignment there. I'll get that fixed here in just a second. Um, then you put these uh, screws back in, the ones that go up uh, or bolts. Uh, you put in your wheel uh, grommets. Uh, tighten down your headlight. Uh, the other one, make sure you tighten down this uh, underneath here is the other bolt to your headlight. Make sure you tighten that down before you put in those grommets. Uh, put the four or six grommets back in there. Tighten that down. Uh, put in, I've taken out a couple other grommets that are in the wheel well uh, down there. Uh, but yeah, uh, pops right together. Uh, no worries whatsoever. Uh, it took me about 15, 20 minutes to get to here. Uh, then you just reach down uh, your engine bay and grab your, your wires. There's a, uh, a ground wire down there, a black one. Uh, so I need to find a place down there in the bowels of the engine to ground it to. Shouldn't be too hard. I'm sure there's a, a screw nearby. This is your power, which should go to your your red here. As you can see, I'm eh, five inches short, no problem. Uh, so I might see if I can rerun that another way, or uh, worst case, I'll just solder a longer lead on there. Uh, the black wire here is what's going to go uh, through your firewall uh, back here at some point which we'll get to uh, in a minute. But uh, the lights are installed. Let me sit down here on the steps. Let's see if we can. See them? Nice and low. Uh, real easy. Uh, you know, it, it looks complicated, but it's really not. I mean, it's four screws and a couple bolts. Uh, so I'm kind of shocked so far. Uh, it's taken me about two, two and a half hours uh, to get here. And again, I didn't know what I was doing. So. Um, so yeah, I think my next step is uh, I'm going to work on that alignment, make sure those clips are in. R remember I showed you the, the white clips that are right underneath the headlights and make sure that those are popped in and locked. Um, then I'll leave, um, there's two grommets down here and two grommets down here that do the flaps. That's how you get in there to change the light bulb if you ever have to, which was what I was originally going to try to install through. Uh, but there really is uh, just no room. You, know, you can't see, you can't maneuver. Uh, it, it's strictly uh, for uh, doing those flaps uh, or doing the changing light bulbs through those flaps. So, so far so good. Uh, I'm gonna get this uh, readjusted and then I'll start looking uh, at the wiring here and seeing how I'm gonna permanently route this to my battery and how I'm gonna route the long lead back uh, here. There's a firewall, I need to get my light out here, but there's a firewall entry point down here. Uh, you would have to uh, basically unwrap the tape on it. Uh, there's tape on the inside of the firewall and then you have to get underneath the dash and unwrap it there. And then supposedly you can take a long screwdriver, uh, tape this into it and push it through, or uh, it might actually be easier. This is the new switch uh, that came with the kit, again, uh, from Shark Racing. Uh, so, I don't know, it might be easier to, here it is, this is the one, to push that one from the inside out into here, and then lock it in here. All depends on how much wiring I've got, and, and I haven't gotten that far yet, so. Uh, but at least she's drivable again, so I can, uh, you know, zip tie or tape up those wires and uh, head out on the road if I need to go and get something. So that's where we're at so far. Okay, guys, here I am underneath the uh, driver's side wheel flap, and you can see the, the headlight there that I put in. Here is, oh, let me see, it's hard to... Hold the camera. So, there's 
the black cable, there it is, with that white tag on it. That's the ground uh, that I was talking about. You need to ground it to the frame. And right here is a frame bolt. So that is a 13 millimeter. So I'm gonna loosen it off. I'm gonna put that white tag thing, if I can find it, there we go, uh, around that bolt and tighten her back down. Nothing to it. Okay guys, change of plans. That's a frame bolt up there is a square. Um, so I just reached around down here. There's another bolt, uh, actually. I think it grounds to metal somewhere, so we should be fine, but that's where I attached it. So the headlight's right there and just two feet over, not even that, six inches. Uh, found a bolt uh, and grounded it in there. So that's where we're at. We should be done with underneath now. Okay guys, I ran out and got just some 14 gauge wire uh, to lengthen my, my red wire down here. And uh, just, uh, I won't go into how to solder, but yeah, basically soldered on a new tail, put some shrink wrap around it so it's nice and uh, uh, tight. Uh, then I ran it up through this grommet uh, or through this hole and tighten it down on that lug nut. And so now that will shut down like that. I'll take that tag off of there. So there's the power. Now we'll start uh, running this back uh, and see how I'm gonna run this uh, back here. Uh, and then I'll start breaking into the steering column. <clears throat> okay guys, so I've got this, uh, but just ran my uh, harness around underneath the edge of the battery. Uh, it's a straight run back here. Uh, and right back there, let's see if I get my angle, right back there, that's where I want to go through. And I just pulled off a bunch of tape there. You can see it's a little glossier. And uh, there's a little rubber. Is that right there? How that peels back, and that's where you're going to try to, to poke this through the firewall. But I got to get you on the other side and do basically the same thing. Be real careful with this wire here. You don't want to break that. I think that's your uh, brake fluid sensor. Uh, but yeah, two zip ties. There were some other wires uh, running down there uh, that I was able to connect to. Just make sure you don't run this. Uh, you know, next to something that's gonna be super hot, it's electrical wiring. Uh, you don't wanna get it uh, mixed up with the mechanical uh, uh, heat type of systems. Uh, but you can see down there, here's where my black wire that goes off to my control. Uh, and then here's, the matter you can actually see the fuse there. And I did the splice and it comes up and goes into that box uh, for power. So I also discovered uh, there's a grounding screw right there. Uh, I don't think the ground that I attached underneath would fit up there. I'd have to solder on, but if I have to, if it didn't light up for something, for some reason, um, I'll do that. But I don't think that's necessary. And I think that's just a, a basically a mechanical ground. Uh, uh, but uh, I think the pan I've got it to will uh, suffice. So now I'm ready to basically start tearing apart, uh, <laughs> see that word loosely, uh, taking apart the steering wheel column. Um, in here, it's my understanding, there's a couple screws down here. Um, and then there's two screws, you can see one of them right there. So you have to turn your steering wheel and then you turn it the other way, and there's the other one. And then this part right here, you can kind of see that seam right there. Um, those two parts will pop off, and you can take the top off, and then we can look at what we have to do uh, for this arm. 
Um, I think from what I've read, uh, you have to take off your, uh, oh, the steering wheel, which kind of scares me a little bit because you've got the airbag in there and all that. Um, but everything I've said is if we just disconnect the power uh, from the battery, wait about a half an hour, uh, then we should be able to do that. We don't have to worry about the airbag uh, going off or anything like that. Uh, no special pulleys or anything needed. Uh, from what I've read, uh, some cars you need a, a steering wheel pulley to pull the steering wheel out. Um, Hyundai doesn't do that. Um, and then we can get in to changing. Uh, excuse me. Uh, changing out to the new switch. And from the looks of this, because this has got a big circle in it, I'm saying yes, I'm going to have to take that whole steering wheel off. Um, so this is your new switch. You'll see there's a... Uh, mine I got with the auto. I don't currently have that. Um, so the lights will automatically come on now if it gets dark, which is awesome. Uh, and then here's the actual... Get a hold of that. The actual fog light switch. Uh, and my current one, if you take a look, and, and this is just the basic model, I don't know what that is in Hyundai terms, if that's just an LS or what, but uh, my base, the basic model that I've got now, you can see I don't have auto uh, and I don't have fog lights. So that is why I'm going to replace it with this new switch which should give me that functionality. So stay tuned for more. So here you can see I have disconnected both my battery terminals. You really only need to do, I think, the negative one, but um, sure, why not? Uh, and I'll take this opportunity to take some sandpaper and clean those off because I see a little bit of uh, 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 a rust or corrosion uh, going in there. So it's a good time to take care of that, just do some daily maintenance uh, before I start on the steering wheel column. Okay guys, here we are in the steering wheel. Kind of loosened it up here. There's one hole right there. Uh, that's an eight mil. Uh, I haven't looked in here. I don't seem to see anything up there that it might be holding that cover on. So I think it's that one. And then the two screws in the steering wheel. So we'll find out here shortly. Okay guys, time to take the uh, airbag off here, which is this center section. Uh, and basically, if you reach around the edge of the uh, steering wheel, uh, let's put a light on here. Uh, there we go. If you reach around the edge of the steering wheel, you'll see these little itsy bitsy holes here and then there's some screw screws here those screws out I don't know if it's necessary but basically there's three of those itty bitty holes there's one on this side one on this side and there's one at the bottom and there's three lock pins in here and they go in and there's little pins that spring out when they go in so uh, just take a small allen wrench screwdriver whatever poke it through there and you'll poke those pins in and then the whole bag should just pop out uh, without going off I might add so get this in here Let's see if we can okay you can kind of see that edge came out there doesn't take a lot of pressure Too old for this stuff. Uh, we'll show you there. Kind of see that one popped out, I think, a little bit. Now let's reach down here underneath. Reach around. There's, there's the hole. I felt that one give. I did not feel the right hand side give, but let's see. 
Nope. This side's still latched in there. You gotta jiggle it around a little bit. There it goes. All right. So, this is your airbag. And uh, you can see the uh, the cables and everything. So we'll we'll disconnect these cables up here at the top, and then we'll work on break, taking the steering wheel off next. Okay, guys, here we are with the airbag all the way out. Uh, this just unplugs right from there. This plugs into the back of the airbag. It's a little copper wire. And then these two are what scared the living bejiminis out of me. Uh, but they just uh, sit right on top there, and they just pull straight out. I use a little little screwdriver uh, to take those guys uh, and pop them straight out. Um, so, uh, airbags removed. So, moving on uh, to the next step. Okay, guys. 21 mil, deep socket. And you can break that uh, center bolt loose. Okay, now before we uh, remove the steering wheel, this is important. Get yourself a, a Sharpie here and go in here and mark. And you can actually kind of see they've already marked it uh, for you. My camera won't focus here. There's little indents so that it's top and top. That way... You're not off just a little bit, and then your steering is kind of compromised uh, by that. So I'll make some extra little marks, make that a little darker, so that I don't remember, don't forget, rather. And it's also because I like the smell of Sharpie. So here we go. That's a little bit better. So now you can see those marks. Uh, and now we can take the steering wheel off, and we know we can realign it. Uh, straight when we put it back on So again really cool you just kind of bang on it and pull straight out and she pops out uh, your wires actually go th through there so when we Reconnect it we'll make sure we feed our our wires through there uh, So steering wheels off So now you just uh, go at a at a seam with your hands uh, or a small screwdriver and the top pops off the console and here's the bottom part of the console. So we're going to take off this clock spring next and then we'll be at the section where we can start looking at our, uh, our light switch. Okay guys, so here's our uh, little clock spring. You'll see there are these little tabs. Uh, first you undo uh, the yellow and white connections down here. Those are facing at the bottom. Uh, so you undo those connections and then you kind of pull this tab down. There's one here, there's one on the right, and then there's one at the very top there. And if you pry those off. Uh, this is a plastic part, by the way, and then the whole thing just pops right off. Um, so, yeah. Click and stick, so to speak. Um, so now, wow, we're down to the, uh, the good part. So, let's take a look and see what our next steps are going to be. Uh, Okay, guys, so right back here, and I'm on the, the right-hand side here with the washers. Well, I can't see from my big hands, but there's a, a white connector that we need to get out. And you just kind of push up, wiggle, and she'll pop out. And then I'm looking to see if this one is still... If, if I look at the new one that I got, it looks like this right hand side here plugs into the left hand side uh, somehow. 
So I'm seeing, uh, like again, that it's another click thing. I see some, if I look at this, uh, and how this is made, uh, I see some points where that just kind of slides in and snaps into the current assembly. Um, so I'm gonna play around with this and I'll need both hands uh, to do that. But once I find those pressure points, we'll lift them up a little bit and then this should just pull straight out. And sure enough guys, there's one major click point right here. You take a small screwdriver in there, pry it up a little bit and this thing just slid right out. So. Now we'll look at taking off the rest of this and go from there. Okay, if I look at this, there's one screw right down here and then there's another wire bundle that you have to pinch uh, and pull out. Uh, and then it probably twists and uh, comes out here. So we'll give that a try. Okay, so there's a second screw that I didn't see because it's way down in that hole there. So this screw down here, this screw down here, and then there's two little catch latches on the back and that should pull right off. And we are victorious. So this pulled right out and that was that little screw that I was just telling you about. So now we're ready to put the new one with the new switches um, back in uh, and start the reassembly here. So, okay guys, so these are the wires that come out of the new assembly for the kit. Uh, one of them goes to a fuse box. Um, I'll read that. Here we go. We're splicing to driving light wire. And the other one is the other end that has to go through that firewall that I was talking about to meet up with the battery connection. So since we have everything off, now is a good time uh, to get down here, or at least to, to push them through and get that get that headed in the right direction anyway. And then we can clean those up uh, later. Of course, one of them and here's the other and they'll end up running especially that fuse one oh, got it wrapped around here so you want to make sure you don't do something like that and wrap it around your steering wheel adjuster um, but there's a little hook back there so I'll probably tie them up there uh, back there and then run them through here and when I pry this off I'll show you that once I get the steering wheel back on. This whole panel here comes off and there should be a little fuse box hidden back there. And that's where this uh, fuse one that I was just showing you is gonna plug in. And then this one will uh, go down through the firewall. So, uh, but these are on, might test them out, make sure, you know, all the functions work. Uh, but we should be good. Uh, so I'll reconnect back here and I'll just finish up the assembly here and I'll tune us back in when I'm down to torquing the uh, steering wheel back on and putting on the airbag. Okay guys, here we are. So clamp the top and back, back down. They just snap together um, like a little clamshell. Huh? Again, just make sure everything you know, moves freely. Make sure you've uh, done all your connections. I fed my uh, my wires back through. I lined up my black dots that I made. I just hand tighten that. So I've got my, what is this, a 21? Yeah, 21 millimeter in there. And I'm gonna torque this down. I need to look up the specs um, um, on what to torque it to, but I'll find out here and I'll tell you in a second as soon as I'm putting the airbag back on. Okay guys, I'm seeing uh, 65 to 80 uh, foot pounds, so I'll set my torque wrench to 70 and torque it down. 
Okay guys, so steering wheel's back on. Now we gotta take those two yellow connectors and they go yellow and blue and they're marked as such on mine. And that little black with the white goes right, where is it? Right there on that little copper tab there. Uh, that's where that goes in. And then the uh, airbag will fold up like a uh, little clam shell here and it just pushes in. These are the little springs that we were talking about where it has the, the tab that pops out when it's seated and that's what we were doing with the Allen wrench was pushing those uh, you know that little tab right there uh, in so that the airbag would pop out so it just pushes right in and job done so got our steering wheel in there we got our new uber high-tech 1995 switch um, now we're ready to feed our wiring uh, along here and plug in um, the fuse and then go through the firewall. So we're almost done, we're getting there. All right guys, now don't forget uh, to put the screws on back here and the screws in there. Uh, now's a good time to clean up your workspace here. Make sure you haven't missed any screws or left anything out. Uh, that's how I discovered my almost faux pas there. So, for me, the fuse box is right here, and you just pull out this thing that actually says on it, fuse. Um, and we're going to look here and see if we can find where we might want to put this wire. Um, up here. I'll try to turn the light on once I uh, locate uh, which one it is here I'm going to use. So, stay tuned. Alright guys, uh, so in the dark it's too dark and with the light bulb on it's too light. But, um, let's see if we can do something here. Um, basically, if I look at my diagram here, the fuse is a 15 amp fuse uh, that comes with it. All of these spare ones up here are 10 or 7.5 amp. I do have a spare 20 amp uh, that's on the far left hand side. It's the second one up from the bottom. Um, so, uh, I think that's what I'm going to use, which is right there second from the bottom so i'll pull that and then this thing uh, you can see just plugs right into that fuse box and then there's an extra fuse here underneath of it so kind of a cool thing um, but that's what we'll do next so uh, no fuse puller in there so i had to go and grab my needle nose. I pulled that out, stuck that one in, slid right in, and now I've just got this little loop. So I'm going to take a, some zip ties and uh, kind of loop that up and zip tie it around here. Um, it's just pulling from over here, if you remember, right above us, really. Um, and that's really the only thing that's, you know, got it. If you look down here, you don't see it. We looped it around this so we don't have to worry about crimping it. Um, when we tighten up our steering wheel um, so we're all in good shape uh, so I'll do that I'll put the fuse cover box back on and then I'll get down here and find my entry point uh, from the firewall and start thinking about getting that thing through into the engine bay okay so here we down are down underneath uh, the dashboard and there's the uh, where we want to go through for our firewall and you'll see there's that tape is taped up over it so I'll unwrap that tape uh, and then should find the rubber grommet get myself a long screwdriver and see if I can't work this rather large adapter through there I might end up cutting the adapter off 
putting the wire through and then re-soldering it uh, on the other side. Not a big deal if I have to do that. Okay, guys, so I couldn't find the end of that tape. Took some uh, razor blade and carefully cut that back until I can get in there. I've got a just done a bent coat hanger and I'm going to uh, try to push that through here in just a minute. I'll tape that end on and see how we uh, see how we do. I don't know if I'm going to have enough room in there to really get that. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of room in there uh, to get that grommet through with it. I'll try. Otherwise, uh, I might end up cutting it off and then solder it back on the other side. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we are. That taped up, and we're just going to try to push it through. All right, so I could not get that grommet through there or with the connector on it, so I cut the connector off, put that through it. Uh, I'm now going to take some uh, cable ties and just tie it up to here, and we'll be uh, good to go. Uh, and then I'll hop in on the other side and see where it came out. Okay, so you can see there's my wire hanger there with my red tape. Uh, so I'll reach down there and get... Okay guys, so I could not get the connector re-soldered on there. Oh, sorry about that. Could not get the connector reconnected on there. Uh, not enough hands to hold it and light and solder down here. Uh, I ended up tinning the two wires. I just cut the connectors off the ends, tended the two wires, um, soldered them together, uh, and then put shrink wrap on top, left a little on the top of it and folded it over and gave it a good squeeze with the needle nose. When it was still hot, uh, made a nice solid uh, connection. Uh, so I need to clean that up there uh, with some uh, cable wraps and black tape. And then my final connection, I thought that was my final one, but there's actually one more. So this little black guy right here. Uh, and he goes uh, to grounding point, which is right there, if you see it. Uh, so we'll get it uh, We'll get that going next, and then we'll close this down. Okay, guys, so just finished up. My battery reconnected here. You remember my red wire runs around up into that cap and attaches. Black wire comes around here between this, comes down here and gets connected. I did a little bit of black tape magic and I grounded to that uh, grommet there in the firewall. So I've taped everything up. I heard the power come on. Uh, let's see. I got my keys in the car. Uh, airbag didn't go off, that's a good sign. That's what worried me the most. Uh, let's see, so, let's turn the fog lights on, it's still too light to see anything, I think, but, oh, it's possible the LED bulbs or the other grounding pin, uh, sometimes the LED bulbs are, uh, sensitive, I think I have to have my low lights on too, if I remember. I got no lights right now, so I've hooked something up wrong, uh, or missed a connection, uh, hopefully not, where I have to uh, take the steering wheel back off and double check all those connections, but uh, I think... Lights in here seem to direct to it. So I've got a little bit of troubleshooting to do. 
you can see the lights dim and go on with it so uh, we'll see what's going on here and then uh, I'll go from there do a little bit of troubleshooting and I'll be back all right guys so I've checked my fuses uh, they all look good um, I'm thinking uh, something didn't get plugged in all the way on the back of that switch <laughs> Um, because I can put my highlights on here and you can see and there's nothing happening uh, with just my regular lights. My regular lights working fine. I really didn't do anything wrong. Uh, there wasn't anything wrong with them uh, to start with. Uh, so, there's no way to test this. Uh, I guess I could have left the steering wheel and everything off um, and not put that back on until uh, you know after I wired everything up just to make sure uh, the switch and everything was working well uh, so that might be a bit of advice uh, on this but I'm pretty sure that it's the the connector on the back maybe it didn't clip in all the way uh, I'm really hoping it's not that switch if it is that multi-function switch I'll be a little upset about that because uh, I have to put the old one back on and then wait uh, call and do an RMA uh, and uh, wait for replacement, uh, et cetera, and so forth. But I'm pretty sure it's it's got to do with that switch or the connection on the back of that switch because otherwise my regular lights would be working and you're just seeing sunlight from the garage door there. Uh, but you can see I've got, got my highlights on and nothing is coming on. So those lights should work normally. Um, so that, that leads me to believe that my problem is just in my switch, uh, kind of a knucklehead, uh, move, but there was no way to test that out until I'd, after I'd put everything through the firewall and hooked up all the electric. So now I've got to disconnect the battery, uh, probably wait about a half an hour before I take the, uh, uh, airbag out, blah, 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 uh, cause I don't want that going off on me. Uh, and then I'll be able to test it at that switch. I'll make sure it's working from the switch first. Uh, hopefully it'll work. Uh, and it's just a simple uh, case of the, the clip not being clipped in all the way. Uh, so we'll give that a shot. Okay, guys. So, uh, yeah, funny story. Um, when I took the bumper off this morning, I unplugged the, uh, the headlights. And that's why I had no headlights so you'll see I've got regulars I've got brights my fog lights still are not working and I think it's that ground uh, issue uh, where I hooked it to that uh, pan on the bottom uh, so I'm gonna go down there uh, take my own meter uh, uh, voltmeter and check it out see if we're getting connectivity and signals and all that fun stuff but normal lights turn signals left right all that works fine. Uh, I just have a, uh, a simple problem uh, somewhere, uh, probably with that grounding screw on why the fog lights aren't working. So that's where I'm heading next. Okay, YouTubers, I have figured out uh, my issue uh, with the new OEM fog lights from uh, Shark Racing. Uh, some of it was me, and some of it was my understanding of the Korean. Uh, uh, that was written on the tags. So the first thing is uh, if you remember when I started we had a uh, battery ground uh, That was way down here that I had connected to the pan to the pan um, And it really does it, it's a true neutral uh, negative uh, so I uh, spliced in this wire uh, Down at the bottom and there's actually two wires that go out uh, one, I assume, goes this headlight, one goes passenger headlight, um, to complete the circuit. So this needs to come back up to negative. So I'm gonna fix that, uh, and I'll actually, depending if I can get my ratchet down there, um, and you guys can't see with the dark in here, but there's a bolt down there for negative, and might hook it up there. You'll see I've got my battery charger on here, so I'm just uh, uh, pushing up the juice because I've been playing with the headlights and haven't had that car running. 
So that was the first issue uh, on the inside, uh, easy fix. I mean, other than I had to get on my back to solder the connections underneath. Um, then the other thing is with the fuse box inside. Um, so this, uh, uh, in the Sonata, at least the 2013 Sonata, um, there is no uh, fog light or low light lamp. Uh, where you want to plug this in at is that one right next to the wiper, the IG-1. So second over, third down. Um, and you can kind of see where I plug that in at. Uh, this fuse also, let me just pull it out of there. Um, this fuse also, um, it only comes with one fuse in it. So you need to take your 20 amp fuse out and put it in there as well. Uh, it's some sort of double fuse and I'm not sure why that one's 15 amp. What was in there was that 20. Um, so I just put the 20 in there. Uh, and once I did that and plugged it into the IG-1, I had it into a, uh, what did I have it into here? Something down here, I can't remember which. Um, but once you put it into the IG-1, uh, that's very important. Uh, then you start to get uh, the functionality uh, that you want. So just two little minor uh, mistakes. I'm trying to get this back up here with one hand. Uh, so I'll get this back, plug back in here, and then I'll give you a demo. Of course, it's daylight out, but at least you'll be able to see uh, what I see. Okay, guys, here we go. So, got this uh, plug back at, and I'll actually see all sorts. Okay, guys, I'm not sure if my phone video cut off or what, but here you can see the passenger side light, the fog light, and the driver's side. So, these are working now. Like I said, the, the one that's labored, labeled battery ground actually goes to the negative post. Uh, it's the one I ignored down there and I soldered this wire on it. Um, make sure your fuse, at least for the 2013, is in the IG-1 fuse in there. And there's two uh, fuses in there, little thing. Uh, there's actually one fuse in there, so you're expected to take the other fuse out and put it into their little adapter and then plug it in and it should work. So I think most of these dashboard lights are just because my battery's low because I've been playing with it. But you can hear it, hear the relay click. Now I don't have a light, if you notice down here, um, for the fog lights. So I have found a hack uh, or a mod, I guess I should say. Uh, that will supposedly light up uh, the driver's side light uh, on the panel. So that's my next thing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop this out and I'll probably just continue this video. So that is where we're at, guys. It's uh, really neat. And I think you can see a little bit of the light there when I do the fog lights on by themselves. There is um, one of the forums I was reading there's um, some state laws where you can't have your fog lights on without your lows, and when your highs come on, your fog lights are supposed to go off. And I, I take no responsibility for that, guys. Check, make sure you're legal. Um, I, I would think that cops have better things to do, um, but uh, you know how it is when they have to make their quota on uh, fines. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna start uh, doing the mod now where I take out the dashboard, and I'll do some more on that. Uh, to hopefully get uh, the light going in here. Uh, I think it's down here somewhere. Um, or maybe it's up top, up top there, where it should light up to tell us that our fog lights are on. Um, and uh, then we'll be finished uh, with this. So all in all, it's been pretty good. Okay guys, uh, to remove the console 2013, uh, just release your steering wheel and get it down. I've got my clam case open because I'm working on the fog lights. 
this little center section right here, from here to here, literally you just yank it out. Pops out little spring clips in there. Uh, two screws down here that will take out and then you just kind of pull this out, working one side against the other. And the whole console will come out and can lay up here uh, on top of your dash while you work on it. So that's how you take your console out, pretty simple. I'm just showing you guys, it does just kind of pull out and kind of have to keep working on it until it snaps. On the back back here is the connector and you just push down and pull that plug out and then the whole console will come out here. And there you go. There's the connector. And here's our, our console with our bulbs and all of this. So what we need to find now, my understanding, I've got to go look a couple things up, uh, but basically I think there's a wire in here uh, that we have to jumper. Uh, I don't know why or which wire it is yet, but I'll find out. Uh, and I think we're going to be doing something like, like you see um, some of those blank spaces in there. Like we'll take, we'll tap into the black one and then plug in, you know, to port 16 or something there. Um, so uh, that's my Okay guys, here you can see the fog lights in action, kind of dusk, where before there was nothing. So I'll be adding the pinouts here probably in the next week or so on how to get the dash uh, co uh, console uh, light working. I just need to find the pinout diagrams and then get that working, but pretty awesome, very nice.